This is one of my favorite things in the whole world. So I'm pretty excited. So, we're gonna need some tools. Not just samples and test tubes. Ideas are tools too. And we're gonna need a place to do all this stuff. People usually think science happens in a lab. Well, that's true. But what is a lab, really? How about this? Or this? Is this a lab? What about here? Or what about deep underground? It smells like science! So we've got a place to ask questions and a way to answer them. What now? Well, it turns out the order of things is pretty important because each step builds on and works with the previous ones. That's science. People talk a lot about green technology and what might happen in the future, but how do we get there? Discovery can mean adventure, especially when your lab is a cave. I got to explore a place few people have ever seen, Snowy River in Fort Stanton, New Mexico. Visiting a rare place like this means there are a lot of new things to see. So if you look at this patch right up here, see how it sparkles back at you? So those are actinobacteria. What you're seeing up there is a whole mat of bacteria. That's like a city that's going about its business. It's finding a way to get energy, it's reproducing. We can study them to see how do they gain energy in such a low energy environment. So you explore. And when you find something neat or interesting or weird, you ask why? I'm noticing a bunch of different colors here. Can you tell me a little bit about what might cause that? Right, so this dark coating is a manganese deposit, which we believe is deposited by bacteria. Now on the surface, I've conducted study on desert varnish, mm -hmm. and we believe they're doing this to gain energy. Scientists think that some of the interesting features of the cave weren't just formed by water and moving rocks. The bacteria helped too. Monica and Diana want to do more experiments to test their hypothesis that microorganisms helped form some of the things we're seeing. One of our big questions when we look at these in caves is how the bacteria are actually mining the rock wall for um, reduced manganese and how they're moving the electrons. We're hoping that we'll see a similar structure here to what we saw in spider cave which is what's called a nanowire, and they can be literally tens of microns long, which is really small, but in an environment like here, it's actually really long. And it allows them to have these structures deep in the rock and be able to conduct electrons. These wire-like things may be one way bacteria get energy in this low energy environment. Who knows? Eventually, researchers might adapt the nanowire idea to solve one of our energy problems. Once researchers have tested their idea, they share it with others. Then they get to do their second favorite thing, argue about science. So they don't really look alive. How did you figure out that they were alive? I spend a lot of time with a colleague who's a geologist, mineralogist, and we look at the same image and we argue about what's life and what's mineral. And so it goes, on and on. There are always more things to discover, more things to see, and new places to go. So Monica, what made you want to look for different kinds of life inside of caves? Well, I saw this documentary about Diana Northup and her work in such extreme environments and how she can find microbes pretty much anywhere. Um, besides, I get to go to pretty cool places like these. Yeah. Being a scientist isn't just about looking through a microscope or writing equations. Although it can be that sometimes. It's about exploring the world around us, looking inside or outside, up or down, sometimes way down, for answers. And those answers can give us stuff, like cleaner, greener energy, or a better understanding of our world. One thing's for sure, there are always going to be more questions. What are you going to ask? I'm Lisa and I'm a scientist.